Cyber Security Leadership Chapter 1 Cyber Security Technology drives the mission of the modern organization. Technology, which was initially used in accounting, finance, human resources, and payroll, is so pervasive in every organization today that it has become core to the business. Technology is transforming almost every business sector. Forward-thinking organizations and leaders are using technology and cybersecurity to distinguish their organizations and propel their businesses to unimaginable new heights. Technology is reducing healthcare costs, increasing access, increasing transparency, and improving quality at a dramatic pace. Technology is also pervasive in our personal lives. Technology, which was expensive and inaccessible to the masses, has become inexpensive, powerful, and consumerized. The usual barriers of access and cost for both hardware and software have vanished. High-quality technology is available at low or no cost. Technology is even redefining the human social experience. Countless people forge global bonds, maintain far-flung relationships, and communicate, engage, and influence millions of others instantly through technology. Life without technology is unimaginable. The Cybersecurity Model In such an environment, confidentiality, integrity, and availability of technology and information systems have become crucial to our work and personal lives. Maximizing confidentiality, integrity, and availability is the primary goal of cybersecurity. Confidentiality ensures that people who are supposed to have access to information are the only people who have access to that information. Integrity ensures that information can be trusted and that no one has manipulated it. Information can be traced back to the source and information can be relied upon to make decisions. Availability ensures that information can be accessed by the people who are supposed to access it from the locations planned and for the duration planned. These goals were first identified in the classic John McCumber 1991 model of information security, which was an important early conceptual model. This model identified three key tools, technology, policy and process, and training and awareness. The model was replaced in 2001 by the McConaughey, Shu, Ragsdale, and Welch model of information assurance. This model introduced two key points. First, information security is not a state, but a process. In other words, the security posture of any organization must improve perennially over time. Second, training and awareness is not sufficient. People controls, or a systematic management of people for the purposes of information security, is required. Subsequent researchers connected such governance and leadership of cybersecurity to the development of a cybersecurity culture. Citation, Chorus 2010, Brady 2010, Hasib 2013. These scholars argue that culture governs behavior more than anything else. The McConaughey et al. 2001 model includes authentication and non-repudiation as two additional goals or characteristics. Authentication is a component of confidentiality which ensures that people who should have access to information and systems have a mechanism to demonstrate they have such authorization. Non-repudiation, similarly, is a component of integrity which enables information to be attributed to a legitimate source and can therefore be trusted. Once the Privacy Act of 1974 and the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, 
of 1996 were introduced, the term privacy as a legal concept was introduced into the cybersecurity vernacular. However, privacy is an aspect of confidentiality. These and other subsequent laws created legislatively protected categories of information and granted privacy rights to members of the public. However, for the cybersecurity professional, privacy falls in the realm of confidentiality. The key difference is that confidentiality of legally protected information is accompanied by legal compliance requirements, disclosure rules, and timetables in the event of a compromise and penalties for non-compliance and lack of demonstrable efforts to comply. As a practitioner, I always focused my technology strategy to the mission of the organization. I used a simple principle. Do nothing to hurt the mission of the organization and do not block anything which will further the mission of the organization. In addition, due to practical and financial limitations, I calculated business risks and prioritized projects and expenses based upon a risk analysis and a strategic vision which spanned several years. Although the McConaughey et al. 2001 model has been a very helpful teaching model, the model is strengthened once we recognize that mission, risk, and governance are essential foundations of the model. During 2014, I made several conference presentations attended by both academic and business professionals and discussed these enhancements with both cybersecurity and non-cybersecurity professionals. Everyone agreed that once these elements are added to the model, we have a holistic cybersecurity model which is easily understood by everyone. We can therefore define cybersecurity in the following manner. Cybersecurity is the mission-focused and risk-optimized governance of information which maximizes confidentiality, integrity, and availability using a balanced mix of people, policy, and technology while perennially improving over time. Cybersecurity and Information Assurance The term cybersecurity comes from the marketing world. Marketing professionals frequently use buzzwords such as cybersecurity, advanced persistent threats, data loss prevention, securing big data, securing the cloud, and securing mobile without ever providing any holistic definition. Sometimes they narrowly define a word to suit whatever technology they are selling, leading business executives to believe that cybersecurity entails pure technology. Billions of dollars worth of network protection technology have been successfully sold this way. Perhaps this is why the word cybersecurity has been historically associated with technology and the protection of networks. But this is also what has caused serious confusion and the haphazard implementation of cybersecurity in the business environment. Protection of the network through technology is only one aspect of cybersecurity. What about threats from inside the organization? What about the behavior of people within the organization? What happens when the same people work outside the perimeter of the organization? Is there such a thing called a perimeter anymore? Let us understand the concept better by applying cybersecurity concepts to the protection of our home. If we focus all our efforts on one main window or door of the house, perhaps on the ground floor, easily accessible to the external miscreant, then our strategy will be highly deficient. Although it may be important to fortify a particular entry point with extraordinary levels of protection, we cannot ignore other aspects of our home. We cannot ignore the behavior of the people 
living inside the house or all the people we have provided keys and access codes to our homes. What precautions do these people use with their access? Do they all know how to arm and use the home security or what to do in the event of an emergency? Have we done drills to ensure everyone will know how to react quickly during a crisis? How will we deal with false alarms? A holistic cybersecurity program protects the whole house. It includes ensuring safe behavior of the people associated with the home. The meaning of the words cybersecurity and information assurance are coalescing into one comprehensive modern meaning. Due to the universal word recognition and marketing panache, the word cybersecurity has replaced the academic term information assurance. The doctoral program in information assurance I completed in 2013 is being renamed to cybersecurity. Many other schools have already completed this transition. We all need to recognize and embrace this transition. As we transition, however, we need to ensure that our academic programs in cybersecurity adopt a holistic cybersecurity teaching model. If we lean too heavily on the technical side or we do not teach all aspects of the modern cybersecurity model to our students and practitioners, our academic program will be deficient. When organizations implement cybersecurity, they need to base their strategy on a holistic model and a proper definition of cybersecurity as well. Without a proper definition and a holistic model, an organizational cybersecurity strategy will be deficient. We must ensure that our model and definition does not take us back to 1991 and the John McCumber model of information security. Cybersecurity leadership is a business discipline. Cybersecurity problems are not unidimensional. We cannot solve them with one dimensional approaches. We need a multidisciplinary, multidimensional approach, and that is what cybersecurity leadership is. The cybersecurity leader must understand the business. Risk management and strategic prioritization of expenditures are key features permeating such a strategy. Cybersecurity leaders focus on risk opportunities as well as threats. A balanced implementation of cybersecurity increases worker productivity and innovation in an organization. This is because in order to engage people in a cybersecurity strategy, we need to give them better training on technology they use regularly and we need to empower them to use that technology more effectively. Cybersecurity is thus a revenue driver as well as a loss mitigation strategy. Cybersecurity is not a technology discipline, it is a business discipline. All business school programs should include a course in cybersecurity leadership. Historically, some cybersecurity programs focused solely on the technical aspects of cybersecurity. This approach may be okay for training practitioners who wish to solely focus on the technical aspects. However, comprehensive cybersecurity programs should focus holistically on technology, policy, and people. Aspects of business leadership should be included in every cybersecurity training program. The role of senior executives in cybersecurity leadership. Business executives are very familiar with business risk management. Unfortunately, by viewing cybersecurity as a technology problem, many senior executives have not embraced their role in the leadership and management of cybersecurity. Chief executive officers, C suite executives, business leaders, corporate boards, and general workers in organizations need to view cybersecurity as their responsibility. Successful cybersecurity leadership starts at the highest 
executive levels of an organization. Senior executives also need to view technology as a core component of their business. Information assets are the lifeblood of most organizations. Technology failures and improper management of risk to technology and systems could drive an organization out of business. Even if something does not cause an outright business failure, prevention is always far less expensive than the actual business and reputation costs of a breach. If cybersecurity can drive an organization out of business, it should be treated as an essential component of the business. In this new world, organizational leaders also need to recognize that everyone is a technology worker and every company is a technology company. Most business projects today are technology projects. Cybersecurity strategy is usually the business strategy itself. Therefore, it is essential for chief executive officers, boards, and other senior business leaders of organizations to understand how to lead cybersecurity. Such an understanding will help them hire the right people and set up the right organizational structure to make their businesses successful. Budgets Cybersecurity has to be baked into the entire thinking process of the organization. It needs to be integral to the inception of every information system project. It is difficult to imagine how a separate budget for cybersecurity would work. Such separation would make cybersecurity a separate activity performed by specialists after a system is implemented. This practice is very dangerous. We can have a separate quality control and testing unit or even an auditing unit, but cybersecurity is integral to the information technology and its budgeting should never be separated from the information technology budget. Such integration will allow appropriate prioritization of resources and spending according to the strategic initiatives of the organization. A human problem needs a human solution. Organizational leaders also need to remember that despite all the technology, humans are essential to the business. We are all leading humans, and we can never lose sight of that. Cybersecurity is substantially a human issue and much less a technology issue. Human problems need human solutions and a keen understanding of how humans behave. Humans are also the key to innovation and productivity in any organization. Workers of a company are its assets not expenses. As assets, they should be developed, nurtured, trained, and retained because they become more valuable over time. They also need to be utilized effectively. Many organizations fail to engage everyone in the organization in a virtuous cycle of innovation and improvement, which is essential for cybersecurity. Everyone uses technology and everyone handles data. Some technology departments have viewed governance as a control issue. These departments have focused on controlling everything and restricting users in their use of technology. Such a control regime has created a trust divide between users and technology managers. It has also restricted the ability of users to use technology effectively, hampering their productivity and reducing their overall understanding and knowledge of risks associated with the technology and data they handle every day. Instead of focusing on training users effectively on all the technology and data they use, 
organizations have spent time and money on cybersecurity awareness programs based on the outdated John McCumber model of 1991. Unfortunately, these programs are still pervasive and pernicious in many corporate environments. Users view them as a necessary evil, but they have no choice in the matter. They waste countless hours, go through lengthy online and in-person training programs, and even suffer through various embarrassing phishing tests without any appreciable improvement in their behavior. The users remain unengaged in the actual improvement of the cybersecurity environment. They do not contribute ideas or point out flaws because they have never been incentivized to do so. However, the solution of a human problem has to be a human one. This is why we need leadership. Cybersecurity leadership. Cybersecurity leadership embraces all the people in an organization as the primary key to perpetual excellence in cybersecurity. Such leadership recognizes that innovation is not the sole responsibility of a few anointed people in the organization. Innovation is the responsibility of every member of the organization. These leaders provide more technology training specific to the job requirements of various users, not cybersecurity awareness training. These leaders teach people how to learn on their own. These leaders give people better control over technology and more information about the technology they use. We need to ensure that people can use technology properly and are trained in advanced self-help techniques because people's work and personal lives have become blurred. Technology has freed up many people from having to go to work because they can work from wherever they are. Global and virtual teams and meetings have become common and pervasive. It has also become highly unwieldy and impractical for people to carry multiple devices, one for work and one for personal use. Ethical Leadership and Cybersecurity Declining ethical leadership in an organization is directly related to weak cybersecurity. If the workers of an organization have an antagonistic relationship with the executives and managers of an organization, it will become very difficult to maintain and improve cybersecurity over time. Decline in worker retention and loyalty will lead to intellectual capital loss as well as reduced cybersecurity for the organization. Worker vigilance, innovation, productivity, and loyalty are key factors that guard against insider threats, both accidental and malicious acts. It is also vital for organizations to maintain their reputations of public trust. When the public entrusts an organization with their personal and confidential information, executives of that organization must embrace the protection of that information as their sacred duty and a moral imperative. Without public trust, a company may be able to retain customers when there is no competition. Long term, this is a precarious way to conduct business. Organizations usually exist to provide a public good or a service that consumers want. While profitability is essential for any business, maximizing short-term gains for shareholders by foregoing appropriate investments or laying off workers annually should not trump the organization's mission of providing a public good. Although shareholders may gain in the short term, they can get wiped out completely if the business fails. Shareholders and boards should seek ethical executive leaders for long-term sustainability and better cybersecurity of organizations.